Well, I got myself into a real pickle by getting so far behind on album reviews. But now I think I finally mustered up the motivation to catch up on them. So, let us proceed. Welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. First of all, before I get started, I just want to give a warm and hearty welcome to any new and recent subscribers that have uh, climbed on board the channel here. I've noticed a modest uptick in my subscriber count lately, so thank you all and welcome. I uh, hope you enjoy what you see here. And for those of you who, are, of course, are my longtime subscribers, thank you for continuing to watch and comment and like and whatnot. <laughs> thank you so much for your support. Uh, now on to the matter at hand today. Uh, you're going to be seeing me crank out an unusual number of album reviews over the next week or two. Uh, just, you know, don't get used to it. As I've mentioned before on my channel, and, for, you know, those of you who are new subscribers might not be aware, album reviews have never been a huge part of my channel. Uh, you know, I don't really have the time to listen to every high-profile new release that comes down the pike, and, you know, let alone have the time to review them all. Uh, so basically, I only talk about the albums that I'm interested in. Uh, it's just that uh, there's been such a big barrage of them lately, and I've you know fallen behind in getting to them. I haven't had my crap together, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, it, for a while there, it was just it was overwhelming me and kind of discouraging me, to be honest. And I almost decided just to let them go, just to let them pass without noticing, without mentioning them. But I think I'll feel better getting them out. Uh, you know, it'll help alleviate that, you know, discouragement and, and whatnot, so, and, you know, who knows, there might be actually be some people out there who may have been waiting for my opinions on these albums, so, anyway, now a few of the albums I'll be taking on in more fleshed out forms in my now and then format, uh, which I enjoy doing, it's something I came up with a couple months ago, uh, but for the majority of them, I fell far behind enough in my albums that I've decided to take care of them in this one video, in a kind of a rapid fire review style sort of thing. Uh, and for the sake of not making this video painfully long, I'm going to try and dissect each of them in about two minutes. So, let's do this! Okay, first one I'm going to take a look at today is pretty much the best one by far of this bunch. It is Tales of America, the debut album by J.S. Ondara. Now, I wanted to do a standalone review of this album, but uh, I didn't do it for a couple of reasons. Now, I saw it in the local store back in February when it was released, and it looked intriguing enough, but... Uh, I went as far as looking at the front and back cover of the CD and ended up putting it back on the shelf. Just wasn't quite sure it would be my thing, but it was Garrett over at Young Entertainment Specialists whose review convinced me to pick it up. And it was one of the best decisions I've made so far this year. Uh, this guy, J.S. Ondara, really carves out a niche of his own on this album. Uh, it is absolutely mesmerizing from his seemingly innate sense of how to craft melody and lyric to his beautifully intimate performances, which are almost all acoustic, by the way. Uh, the production here is also just perfect for what this material is. It's just kind of got this rough-hewn sort of a thing, almost a DIY kind of thing. There's a bit of an echo in several of the songs here that just, it feels like just the right amount. And I pretty, I'm pretty sure it's not artificial. It's not a production trick. It's a natural echo in the recording. Some tracks sound like they were recorded in an empty cathedral. Now, it pretty much doesn't matter what genres of music you are or aren't into. If you haven't heard this album yet, you must. Uh, you've got to. It's, it's, it's probably a cliche to say that listening to an album is an experience, but in this case, that's not overstating it at all. It, it's the truth, honestly. Uh, why did I not put this album in a standalone review by itself? Well, basically because between Garrett over at Yes and Ryan over at True North Reviews, who also beat me to uh, mentioning this, this album, uh, despite him not getting to it until about two months after it was out. Uh, both of them have said pretty much all that I could say about it, and I agree with every word they both have to say. So I'll probably put the links to both of their reviews in my description below, so go check them out. But yeah, this album, you've got to listen to it if you haven't yet, as I said. This is unquestionably in my top five of the year so far, and to put it this way, uh, there are going to have to be some pretty damn remarkable albums come out the rest of this year for this one not to stay in my top five, probably even in my top three. So yeah, Tales of America by J.S. Andara. You've got to check it out. Well, since I probably surpassed my own self-imposed two-minute limit on the J.S. Andara review, I'll probably make up for it in brevity with the rest of these albums today. Uh, next up here is Hurts to be Human, the eighth album by Pink. 
Now, I've always respected Pink both as an artist and as a person, but I've never really been able to get into her music. Uh, I've tried and failed before, but I wanted to try again, so that's why I decided to pick up this album. And Well, what really clinched it, actually, was when I saw that Khalid was uh, going to be appearing on it, and Chris Stapleton also being featured on the song didn't hurt either. I I'm not a huge fan of Chris Stapleton, uh, but I like, you know, I, I expect a good track whenever I see that he's appearing on one. Uh, his feature on Justin Timberlake's album last year blew me away. That was the crown jewel of that album by far. And also Rabel. Uh, I've started to enjoy Rabel's vocals lately. He's been featured on two or maybe three uh, albums that I have by uh, EDM artists. I think Martin, Martin Garrix has him on one or two tracks on his collection uh compilation that I have and a couple others. So anyway, yeah, I've start, really started enjoying Rabel lately. So yeah, there's three reasons right there to pick up this album, uh, along with just wanting to get back into Pink. So uh, what did I think of it? Uh, I liked it quite a bit, but something keeps me from totally loving it. Now, I very much enjoyed the Khalid featured title track. That was an, an outstanding one. That was a standout on this album. And Courage is a great anthem on it. Uh, My Attic is one of the quieter songs in the album that I thought was just beautiful and Pink's harmonies with Chris Stapleton on Love Me Anyway and Rabel on 90 Days were just great. Uh, they were just fantastic. So, uh, but I guess the issue that I have with this album is that nearly all the other songs were just okay, and there wasn't a lot that made them stand out. So yeah, uh, not enough standouts and uh, too many okay songs on it is basically what kept me from really loving this album. But I like it enough that I'm going to uh, try and delve deeper into Pink, so uh, yeah. Not bad, but not great. Okay, next up in today's lineup is Ben Platt's debut album, Sing To Me Instead. Now, not being a theater person myself, I was unfamiliar with Ben Platt until this album. Uh, and this is another one, by the way, that came to my attention after Garrett at Young Entertainment Specialist reviewed it. Now, I thought his voice was a little bit thin, frankly, when I listened to the clips at first, so I dismissed it and moved on. But then I saw it on sale at a local store weeks later and decided to go ahead and pick it up on a whim and give it a closer listen, and I'm glad I did. Now, it's not phenomenal or remarkable, but it's a good bit better than my first impression led me to believe. Uh, I have to admit that I rushed to judgment on his voice, uh, or, or maybe I was just in the wrong frame of mind when I was hearing it for the first time. Uh, there are a few up-tempo songs, and they're pretty good. New is pretty catchy, and I actually enjoy Share Your Address, despite its somewhat cringy lyrics. I just For some reason, I just have a soft spot for that song. Uh, but despite how well he can belt out a high-energy lyric, his strength seems to be in the ballads and the anthems, and that's what the majority of this album consists of. Uh, the heartbreak on Hurt Me Once, uh, the intimacy on Grow As We Go, the inspiration of Ease My Mind, and the wistfulness of Older, he conveys all of those beautifully. And uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good, it's a solid debut album, and I'm probably going to keep my eye out for his next album. So yeah, not fantastic, uh, but a little bit better than good, I have to say. So yeah, Ben Platt. And now on we go into the second half of my lineup, which all happen to be sophomore albums. It's the sophomore album half of my show, what can I say? First up we have Girl, the sophomore album by Marin Morris. Now I had ignored Marin Morris until just about a year before this album came out, when I picked up her debut, Hero, on a whim, and I was caught off guard at how good it was, and so I highly anticipated this album when it came out. And for the most part, it didn't disappoint, and it was worth the wait. Uh, she doesn't have quite the spark and spunk that Casey Musgraves has, uh, but she's still very good at what she does, I think. Uh, I like All My Favorite People, but not as much as I want to, because it bears a bit too much of a resemblance to Dolly Parton's 9 to 5, uh, so much so that I'm surprised there hasn't been talk of legal action, or at least a demand from Parton's camp that she be given a songwriting credit. It, it, it's that similar. Uh, but anyway, also the song RSVP feels like she's deliberately trying to inject some hip-hop or R&B into her sound to kind of win over that uh, demographic, and so that one comes off as a little awkward. But uh, yeah, there, there are a few favorites on this album for me. Uh, a Song for Everything. I love songs about music or songs about other songs. So yeah, that's, that was inevitably going to be a favorite of mine here. And uh, Great Ones is another uh, good song on here and also Common featuring Brandy Carlisle. So yeah, it's it's a good album. I, I'd give it a middle of the road review, so yeah. Okay, forging on ahead, next up we have Free Spirit by Khalid. Now I enjoyed how there was much more variety in this album uh, compared to his debut, not just in the moods of the songs, but also in his voice. Uh, he 
his first album quite frankly worried me in how samey the song sounded and how almost one-dimensional his voice was, uh, at least in my opinion, honestly. Now, I liked the second half of this album in particular, uh, with several of the songs leaning more into the pop territory to, to contrast the R&B sound of the rest of the album. The one thing I didn't like about this album is how long it was. Uh, now, years ago, I enjoyed getting as much bang for my buck out of albums as I could with my CDs. Uh, for instance, whenever there was a deluxe edition of an album available alongside the standard edition, I would almost always opt for the deluxe just because there were more songs on it. Uh, but recently, I've come to appreciate how important it is for albums to have a reasonable runtime. Uh, about 40 minutes, 12 tracks or so. Uh, that seems ideal, in my opinion. Uh, this one is nearly an hour long, uh, with 17 tracks on it. It would have probably behooved him to take out about five tracks, and uh, you know the album would have been around 40 to 45 minutes at that point, and it wouldn't have run the risk of, you know, frankly, overstaying its welcome. So yeah, that's that's the one drawback of this album is trying to get through it all in one listen is a little bit tedious. So uh, yeah, maybe on his next album, his subsequent albums, he will uh, kind of take the hint, hopefully, and uh, shorten them. But uh, yeah, my favorite tracks on this album, I would have to say, "Better" is a really good one. I really enjoyed that one. Hundred. I like that one for some reason. I, not very many people have uh, pointed out that one as a favorite, but I really like it. And Talk is one of the uh, good ones, one of the singles on this album. So, yeah, uh, it's good if you can get through it. So, yeah, check out Khalid. And last but not least in my review-a-thon today is Hosier's sophomore album, Wasteland Baby. Again with the extra long albums. According to my iTunes, this album is three seconds longer than Khalid's Free Spirit. Now, I think Hozier is a great musician, don't get me wrong, I loved his debut album. Uh, but because I think he's a good musician, I believe that putting out shorter albums would work to his benefit, just as with Khalid. Uh, long albums can be a slog to get through, and we don't want to get sick of a musician before we're done with one album. Uh, we understand that you want the consumer to get the most for their money, and we realize that you may have a lot of songs that you want to share with the world, but especially on physical recording, it's also very important to emphasize quality over quantity. Less is more. Come on. When are people going to get this? Uh, but yes, honestly, this album is worth listening to. It's just, you know, perhaps divided into two half-album sessions would work uh, better, uh, would be more impactful. But yeah, I mean, this album is full of good songs. Uh, Nina Cried Power is a standout. Uh, Mavis Staples is featured on that track. It's just great. And almost sweet music. It's, again, another song about music. I just love that. And Dinner and Diatribes is a really interesting one. That comes uh, in the second half of the album. So, yeah, a very good album. It's just, it's it's a long one, you know. So, uh, yeah, listening to it in two halves probably would, would uh, work better than trying to get through the whole thing at once. So, yeah, a very good album. Just, uh, it could have been shorter, just like with Khalid's Free Spirit. Uh, basically, the same review for this one as with Khalid. Good album, but it should have been shorter. Oh, that was a lot of ground to cover, and hopefully I won't have to do this sort of thing again. Yeah, as I mentioned in my Channel Chatter video last week, I've got an idea on how to uh, do album reviews, as many of them as I do, uh, in such a way that uh, hopefully I won't fall behind on them to this degree again. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little review-a-thon video here. Uh, then that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.